Hello, my fellow comic book collectors. It's Alan, the Comic Collector Geek, and this is going to be a very special uh, Friday cover challenge. Uh, it might actually be a bit extra challenging because it is a special one. Um, recently, uh, John Ramita Sr. has passed. Um, he was like 93 years old, so <laughs> he lived a long, full life. Uh, he was born in 1930, uh, January 24th of 1930 and passed away on June 12th, uh, 2023. So just recently passed. Um, so because of that, I wanted to kind of dedicate this video to him. And uh, I want to give a little bit of a spotlight on the artist and showcase some of his, um, you know, top 10 books. Uh, these are not really his top 10 books, but uh, the top 10 that I have in my collection, I, I was really scouring my collection to try to find uh, John Romita senior covers. So you know, it is what I have. <laughs> I, uh, I wish I, I had more actually, because um, he, he's a great artist. Uh, so John Marita Cedar is actually famous for creating a bunch of characters or co-creating, I should say. Uh, he was involved with co-creating uh, uh, Mary Jane Watson, uh, The Punisher, Wolverine, and Luke Cage. Uh, he started as an artist back in 1949 and he worked as a ghost artist for uh, Time in the Comics. There was actually a point where, <laughs> I guess one of his first art assignments, uh, they had him working on a romance book and um, they, uh, I guess the artwork was so bad, like he was, he, he himself said this, that his artwork was so bad that the women in this romance book look like emaciated men. And uh, they basically said, hey, <laughs> will pay you but uh they never published the artwork so that was his first experience but he he really grew from then so uh i just thought that was a funny story about john marita um uh so yeah so in 1951 though he started working on horror romance and war titles for atlas and in 1958 to 1965 he worked on romance books for uh, DC. And I actually have a few of the romance books for D, uh, f that he did in DC, but I wasn't sure which covers were which, so I wanted to make sure I showed the right, <laughs> right covers for him. So I brought other things. Um, in 1965, though, he brought, came back to Marvel and he started working on Daredevil. And in 1966, he started working on Spider-Man. And within a year of him working on Spider-Man, because his artwork is so great. Um, Spider-Man went to, became the second most popular title uh, for, uh, best-selling title for Marvel. So that's a good sign. Um, in 1973, he was promoted to art director and heavily influenced uh, Marvel, Marvel's art direction from the 70s into the 80s. And in 2002, he was inducted into the Will Eisner uh, comic book hall of fame now i'm going to show you <laughs> uh some of my uh my collection for uh john marita uh so here's one this is strange tales of uh, brother voodoo and this is a, a john marita cover just a cool cover you know kind of showcases his artwork a bit so much going on on this cover really great cover actually uh, and next this is an interesting one that most people wouldn't realize it is his artwork, but it is. As I said, John Morita did a lot of romance books, but one title that most people don't realize that he did is he did Barbie. <laughs> so this is his, John Morita Sr.'s artwork on Barbie. Uh, so just a, you know, kind of a hidden gem for, uh, for him. So yeah, just a fun one. This is um, Barbie number one. And Number eight on my list. I showed this one before, but you know, hey, it's it's a classic cover. Uh, this is uh, Amazing Spider-Man 41, and it's the first appearance of the Rhino. But it just shows you, uh, it showcases a bit of the dynamic uh, art style. Um, you know, just these like smashing through the wall, and Spider-Man's Spider trying to stop him, but seems almost unable. Just really awesome cover. Okay, so that's. One, another one and then we got number 46 and this is another uh, one of his covers 
And um, this is the first appearance of the Shocker. And again, you can see sort of the dynamic style to his artwork. It's just really fun stuff. Um, probably why, you know, Spider-Man becomes became such a popular title. So it's like, you know, you got Spider-Man swinging, you got the guy blasting, it's just, and things are getting destroyed all over the place. Just lots of fun. Um, so, and as I said, he was um, the co-creator for Mary J. Watson. And this is uh, Mary Jane Watson's first facial cameo picture. <laughs> I think it's like where she says the famous line, you hit the jackpot, baby. <laughs> so this is um, uh, Amazing Spider-Man number 42. And as I said, he did work on Daredevil. And here's one of his favorite, uh, another character that he was involved with, uh, the Gladiator. And this is uh, Daredevil number 18. Just a cool cover. And this is an interesting one. I was actually surprised when I, you know, read the notes on this one. This one, he, you know, John Morita Sr. also has a son who's an artist and, or junior, <laughs> um, and uh, they actually did a cover together. And this is an example of a cover that they did together. This is Amazing Spider-Man Annual number 16, which is the first appearance of um, Jessica, uh, not Jessica, uh, Monica Rambo, Rambo, Rambo. I always mess up her name, actually. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so Monica Rambo. So, yeah, so just, uh, you know, and she's going to be in the new Marvels movie. So, uh, yeah, and she was in the uh, WandaVision TV series as well. So just a, you know, cool cover and uh, one that they father and son team on it. So that's, I thought that was just a little extra interesting for this one. So... And number three on my list is another character that he was involved with, the Prowler. And uh, this is Amazing Spider-Man number 78. And this is the first appearance of the Prowler. I guess the Prowler, I didn't see the in, in, Across the Spider-Verse movie, but I heard that uh, the Prowler might have a big, might have had a big role. I don't know. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so this is, just an interesting book, um, Amazing Spider-Man 78. And number two on my list, and this is a big one. <laughs> uh, as I said, he was involved with creating the Punisher, which is a pretty major character. And this is the first appearance of the Punisher. And this is another one of his greatest covers. Uh, this is uh, Amazing Spider-Man 129. And it's just a really great cover. Like it just, you know, so much, like this has been homage so many times. Uh, it's also the first appearance of the Jackal. <laughs> Everyone always jokes about that. Um, but uh, yeah, just a really great cover. I just I always love this cover. The yellow and the target. It's just so much going on for it. Um, so this is Amazing Spider-Man number 129. That's number two on my list. You're probably wondering, what, what cover would I say is the, my favorite uh, John Morita Sr. cover? Well, it is this one. Amazing Spider-Man 50. I just love this cover. This is the first appearance of the Kingpin, and it's just a classic cover. This is just one of those covers where, you know, it just, something about it, it's like, uh, it just really uh, has so much motion to it that, you know, he, you see Spider-Man, he's just sort of given up. He's given up on being Spider-Man. just, so much has gone on, he just can't handle it. So, uh, it's just a great walking away from the, the Spider-Man suit kind of uh, cover. It's just, I think it's a really great cover. It's so simple yet conveys so much meaning. So um, I just think it's a really great one. Uh, this is Amazing Spider-Man number 50. So this week uh, I'm asking members of the community to show their uh, top 50 uh, John Morita Senior covers. And we're gonna just use the hashtag um, John Morita Senior. SR. <laughs> okay. Uh, so if you use that hashtag plus the Friday comic challenge, those two hashtags, uh, then everybody can see your videos and hopefully we can, you know, uh, commemorate uh, this uh, artist together. So thank you for watching. Uh, bye for now.